Hello everyone. I'm still processing the fact that my last video somehow has 2,000 views? What the hell? Like, god, if I had known that, like, that throwaway video, that's just how I thought of it at the time, was gonna hit 2,000 views in, like, a week, I probably would have not been in my pajamas and might have worn makeup and might have had some decent lighting and maybe thought about what the content of the video would be. So, huh, that being said, welcome to my new subscribers. Uh, so welcome to one of my transition update videos. I do one of these a month so that I can limit the trans content on my channel so that it doesn't completely dominate everything in my life. This is the start of my 14th month of estrogen, so that's when I count my timeline from. And I sort of like to track my progress, uh, follow up on things from the previous updates and things like that. It's sort of an accountability tool for me. It also gives me a metric to like view the status of my transition progress and everything to make sure that I feel like I actually am getting stuff done and making progress with this and everything because it can like definitely get to a point where I feel like nothing is changing and everything's horrible. This one should be nice and short. I say that every time and then I end up editing it out when I see that it takes longer than 20 minutes, but here we are. Mostly it should be short because not a lot has happened, which I'm kind of sorry to say, but I feel like no news could be good news, but it's not good news. I'm still really, really struggling to find a place and or person who is going to be able to actually help me get my hair removal done prior to my vaginoplasty. And I feel like this is a thing that should be way easier to get done than it is. Because like it benefits the surgeon's office to like make sure that I have a good outcome. And like you'd think they'd want to like hook me up with somebody. I did call them. I actually called them multiple times before they called me back. And they were supposed to call me back within one business day each time and it was a week later. So take that how you will. And when they answered the phone, they were kind of not professional with me at all. And they were kind of like, yeah, what do you want from me? I'm like, I want a recommendation. I want to know where I'm supposed to go to get this done. And so much of the reason that I'm afraid to like have these conversations is because I feel like they're going to tell me, oh yeah, don't worry about that until after your consultation in 2021, because like, it's gonna be a long time after that consultation before you go under the knife. And obviously that's problematic. I'm gonna have to get this done no matter where I go. I'm gonna have to get hair removal if I want this particular kind of vaginoplasty. And even if I don't, it wouldn't hurt. So as far as I'm concerned, this needs to get done as soon as humanly possible. Just on the off chance that a new appointment earlier opens up or something. Like I wanna be able to go that day if they're able to. Like I wanna get going as quickly as humanly possible and I want their schedule to be the limiting factor, not mine. Plus I need to feel like I'm doing something because otherwise I'm just sitting here existing and like yes, going through puberty but like not gaining anything in this area and it's so frustrating because I've spent the last 29 years of my life living that way and I don't want to live that way anymore and like oh it's so frustrating they did send me a recommendation to an electrologist that they often refer their patients to in Manhattan which is a bit of a hike for me as I mentioned in my previous video on this subject about two and a half hours which is not super ideal for this particularly since I'd have to like drive back in pain in my crotch in a car that I'm sitting in uh, not super ideal, obviously, but they are part of the same, like, network as my current electrologist who I'm seeing for my face. And I'm kind of wondering if, like, hey, if you know how to do the paperwork, can you just teach my person how to do it? Because that would be great. Doesn't bring them any business, but eh, it's worth a shot. Worst thing they can tell me is no. But I very much get the feeling that this electrologist that they're recommending is not going to know how to do the paperwork either which is going to be really unhelpful because that's the entire thing that I need. And none of this matters unless I get it in writing from my surgeon that I actually need to do this. And I'm not even sure they'll do that. So I'm not even really sure who to call first, to be totally honest, because I could call my surgeon again and be like, hey, can you give me this letter? Because if you can't, there's no point in pushing on this whole insurance thing and I should just pay out of pocket for it, which I don't want to do, but what else am I supposed to do? Or I could try from the other angle and see if the electrologist even knows how to do that paperwork. And like, I'm trying to decide which of them is the least stressful to call. And I really don't even know at this point. I start getting into this spiral of like, I don't want to have to do any of this. And I certainly want my insurance who is offering to pay for it to be able to pay for it. 
but no one knows how to do it. The surgeon in particular pisses me off with that one because I'm like, this is what you do. Why aren't you better at doing this? I should be contacting the other surgeons that I have on my list. Um, that would probably be a smart idea. I'm taking a break from all of this to be completely honest with everyone because I'm just like so overwhelmed with all of it. I'm so stressed and I'm trying to recognize my own limits with this because if I push too hard with it, it will burn me out and I'll lose all that energy that I need in order to like cope with everything else I'm going through. So I'm taking a small breather from this. By next month, I'll have another update. It's really just this week that I'm just like, no, I, I can't deal with this anymore. I just, I'll come back to it. Because for better or worse, I have until April of 2021 before I even have my consultation. Like, this is a year away, you know? And while I have that time, I may as well use it to like, not burn myself out and not stress myself out too completely that I can't function in the other areas of my life. I would like for things to go smoothly just once in this transition, but that's not the case. Next up, I wanna talk about my HRT. Uh, I have, have my Spiro, as I said last month, and I feel fine. Um, I, I've had some little signs where I'm like, ooh, maybe it might be just a little too high, but um, I also shifted my injections back and we're gonna get my levels checked next month. So I'll have those results by the time I make my next video on this subject. So that'll be good. Uh, I'll have some useful data there because obviously I would really, really love to not be taking any spironolactone, to be honest, if I can, but it's really gonna come down to my levels. And like, honestly, if my levels aren't where I want them to be without the spironolactone, I'll at least know I tried. I'm definitely not going to be in a situation of just taking medication, I don't know whether I need it, you know? Like, no matter what, I will be certain by the end of this whether or not I need it to be on the higher dose of spironolactone, so that's a worthwhile use of my time. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is on the legal side of things. The DMV website, which continued to use my old name, that needed to be fixed, and I called them. I was on the phone for three hours and talked to a human for about 10 minutes of that total across those three hours. It was insane. And they do not make it easy to navigate that phone system to actually get to a person who even knows what you're talking about. Like at one point, I actually got told by somebody, oh, you called the wrong number, you need to call this number. And I said, all right, I'm ready to write it down. And then they read to me the phone number that I had just dialed that I was on currently. And they're like, oh, well, I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna transfer you anyway. I'm like, I just, I just stayed on hold for two hours. So that was a real pain in the ass, but honestly what came after it was even worse because I finally got to talk to a human being who actually knew what I was talking about and they're like, okay, I have to send you over to the other department so that they can actually delete your account. And I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna have to repeat this entire story for a fifth time today. And then he asked me what my old name was. And he framed it in a very like official, like we need to verify that this is the account you're talking about before we can blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't actually have to tell you this at all. Like I did, and it sucks using my old name in reference to myself. That hurt, and then knowing that I was gonna have to do it again with the second person was really hard, and I actually broke down crying in front of my coworkers, everything's fine. And the next thing I know, I'm transferred over to the second guy, and weirdly he doesn't even ask for that name, and I'm like, wait, what just happened? So I kind of wonder if it was just this guy who was curious and just did something he wasn't supposed to do. And I'm like, oh my God. At the time I was like so utilitarian about it. I was like, I don't care what words I have to say into this microphone right now to make you stop using the wrong name on me. I will say whatever you want, just make it stop. But now looking back on it, I'm like, what's this guy's problem? Like, should I report him? What do I do? Is this normal? I have no idea. And then when I talked to the guy who actually has the power to like delete the accounts, he was like, yeah, this is weird. We get these all the time. I'm like, yeah, because your site doesn't update people's names when they legally change. And you don't seem to think that's something you should fix. I just, I can't get over as a programmer, how much this bothers me. I'm like, why are you even storing my name in a different place that doesn't have any referential integrity to the like record? It's weird. I suppose the important thing is that it is fixed. I am all set now until I get married and like everything's fine. But anyway, the point is that no matter what amount of pain I went through, I got through it. 
A concept which segues nicely into my discussion of electrolysis. Now I posted a progress pic on my Instagram comparing four months ago and like 12 sessions ago with today what five days of growth looks like on me. And I gotta say, I'm really seeing some results, which is fantastic because it is so expensive. <laughs> but no, really, it is great to see actual visible results that show up on camera like, oh, it's so good. It makes me feel like I'm not just suffering for no good, you know? And like, obviously, the experience of going through electrolysis itself is really unpleasant. Like, it's not a fun process. And for me in particular, with my particular PTSD and anxiety issues, it is super not fun. Although actually on that subject, the last time I went to electrolysis, I was actually able to like not disassociate from it completely. So like I was fully present the entire time, which has never happened before. I usually like get lost in my own head and kind of leave the room in that sense. And like, I am so proud of myself for that. And it's such a minor accomplishment because it's like, that's everyone else's default. And there I am like struggling with it. But for me and my personal growth, I am so proud of myself with that. I am making progress and that's what really matters with it. And I'm really, really looking forward to not having to go weekly. I'm looking forward to the like three and four week cycles. We're making our way down my chin. So we're about here now. Uh, the neck is next. And like, I was given some choice in this matter. I was like, no, I want you to keep clearing my like upper lip every single time. I don't care so much how much progress we don't make down here because this isn't super visible and isn't getting me clocked. And I just so, so badly want to be done with all the like most visible parts that cause me the greatest de degree of dysphoria. Like, I think that makes sense. But yes, I am so proud of my progress, both in terms of my like ability to cope with this process and the actual progress of like not having hair that grows on my face in that area anymore, which is fantastic. And the last thing I want to talk about today is that apparently my landlord calls me sweetheart now. Allow me to explain. So last week our kitchen sink started leaking just overnight and I was like, okay, I guess this is a thing I'm doing with my weekend now. And I texted my landlord the same day and was like, hey, I just want to keep you in the loop. We called the person you always ask us to call when these kinds of things happen to take a look at all this and uh, this is what's going on. I'll keep you in the loop. And the next thing I know, her husband is calling me. And by calling me, I mean calling Amanda's phone because phone numbers, what are they? How do they work? And he gets on the phone with me and he starts screaming at me that like, I need to call sooner when these kinds of things happen. This is a real emergency. And like, why am I not on top of this? And don't bother texting because that's how, not how phones work. And I'm like, all right, dude. And the worst part of it was he starts mansplaining to me how like, phones work. I'm like, I know how a phone works. I'm a programmer. I use a phone. At minimum, I know how to use it better than you who can't even be bothered to call the right number, to call the number that called you. Like that was another thing that happened. I called him and he called me back on the wrong phone number. And then to top all of this off, he eventually goes like, whatever happened to dead name? And I was like, I thought this was clear. I said, we are the same person. I changed my name back in March. And he goes, oh, well, you sound great. I'm like, thanks, I've been working on it really, really hard. And he calls me sweetheart. And this is the second time in as many phone calls this happened. Between that and the mansplaining and everything, I'm like, I am so happy that you think of me as a woman and that you treat me like every other woman that you encounter. But also, Please, please, please treat women better. It's just hard to explain because like people do treat you differently when you are a woman than when you look like a guy. They try to explain things to you that you definitely understand as though you're too stupid to grasp it. They treat you as though you're irresponsible and flighty when you're on top of things as much as humanly possible. And they call you by pet names even though they have no right to do that. And I suppose I could have said, hey, I'm not your sweetheart, please don't call me that, but I didn't want to because I didn't want to have conflict with my landlord. I experienced a shift in this in my workplace and in other areas of my life. It's just a thing that I'm still kind of getting used to. And I'm like, oh my God, how do we survive? How do we have all the patience in the world to put up with this crap all the time? I'm not new to this. I've been a feminist my entire life. I just, it's very different experiencing it firsthand than it is like, third party, you know? I don't know. Maybe I should just be thankful that the kitchen sink got fixed. Maybe. I don't know. But that is all for this transition update video. I will be back again next week with another video that I hope you'll find interesting. Until then, stay curious.